back to my channel. So in today's video, I just want to share with you uh, an updated, I guess, an update on what kind of apps I'm using when I'm staying in Vietnam. So a few years ago, I made a video called Useful Apps in Vietnam. And I just want to provide a personal update on what apps I'm using right now. It's more personal in a way and it's not only just like Vietnamese or local apps I'm using. I'm also using other apps from around the world. So I just want to share with you guys what apps I find useful for my daily life here in Vietnam. Let's get straight into it. So before we go into the apps, the phone that I'm using is actually an iPhone 7 Plus if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I haven't upgraded. I don't feel like there's a need to upgrade at this point in time. I don't know. It's still working very well for me. First thing is of course my lock screen. I recently changed my lock screen from daily to uh, spirited away. I'm not sure if it's only me but I organize my apps according to emojis. It's just neater that way and it's minimalistic. So you've got your mail, you've got transportation, you've got social media, photography, some apps from South Korea, entertainment and music, you've got locations. Uh, widgets, I guess, Vietnam apps, some random app that I cannot delete, measure, productivity apps, which I don't know like what emoji to describe that, uh, my money and finance, and also my work. So for mail, it's pretty straightforward. I don't need to go into detail for that. So let's get straight into transportation, shall we? So for transportation, I have three apps. I have Grab, Mylin and Bina Sun. There are a lot of ride hailing transportation apps in Vietnam, so there's like Go Viet B. But uh, I use Grab because I don't like the connection for the other apps. I feel like it's a bit, I don't know, iffy compared to Grab. Grab is more smooth sailing for me in terms of uh, internet connection, banking, all of that. So basically, I just need to top up my uh, Grab wallet. I think it's called Mocha via my bank account. And yeah, it just automatically deducts from there. So let me go into Grab. Uh, I use Grab bike, Grab car, Grab food, and as well as Grab delivery. So basically everything. Grab car and Grab bike, it's pretty obvious. But for uh, food and delivery, so basically Grab food, it's like Uber Eats, you just order the food and then the Grab person, the Grab driver will go and pick up your food from the restaurant or like one of the partnering merchants and they bring the food to you. Whereas for Grab delivery, it's like express postman service. So if you need to deliver something within the next, I don't know, half an hour or six hours, yeah, they can collect your items and deliver it via motorbike. Apparently, you can also pay your utility bills, so subscriptions and phone bills, but I don't do that. Um, yeah, I just use Grab for transportation, delivery, and food. So for both Mylin and Vinasan apps, Unless I cannot catch a grab, then I will use one of these two services. There are taxi apps. So you can key in your address and then they'll give you like a flat rate or you can choose to pay by meter depending. Sometimes, you know, it's like, like a hit and miss. Sometimes paying by meter is cheaper than paying by a flat rate. So just be careful of that. When I go by taxis, I usually pay by cash or by my debit card, but I haven't tried out their online payment thing. Apparently you can even connect your app to the Momo wallet. So that's something interesting. So I do use Momo wallet. I will show you guys that app later. It's very convenient as well. Moving on to my social media tab, so as you can see here, I mainly use Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, and Viber. The only reason why I have the Facebook and Messenger app is because my friends all use them. Facebook and Messenger are still popular platforms uh, in Vietnam to connect people. So usually when you ask people social media handles, right, they will give you your Facebook. I'm not really active on Facebook and Messenger, guys. Like, I rarely, rarely use it. To be honest with you guys, if my friends are not using Facebook or Messenger, I wouldn't use it as well. I'm more active on Instagram and YouTube. Okay, the most exciting part of this video is probably my photography section. So I have a lot of camera apps. I have Visco, I have 
Photoshop Express, I have Foodie, Snow, Snapseed, Beauty Plus, You Like, Pick Collage, and each app serves a certain purpose. So I usually use Visco, it's like my go to app for all of my Instagram edits. I really like all the filters and how it's very easy to sort your pictures into a feed. The only reason I use Photoshop Express is because of its uh, sharpening function. Like, I feel like its sharpening function is one of the better ones out there. For Foodie, I used to use it a lot, but then now I don't. I actually use Snow instead. I mean, come on guys, how can you not like Snow? Oh, it's so cute. All the filters are like, you know, bunnies and hearts and... It makes your skin look good as well, especially on bad skin days. As for Snapseed, I use this app when I need to elongate my legs because, girl, I'm short. I'm only 5 feet 1, which is like 1 meter 55, and that's really short. Sometimes your legs look really bulky, so you just need to, you know, change the perspective a bit. <laughs> and I also use Snapseed to, um, you know, increase the light in certain areas because sometimes, like, certain areas are darker than the others, so I just want to balance that out. For Beauty Plus, uh, I don't remember what I use Beauty Plus for, guys. Next. So for you like, I use you like because it has these really strange like uh, suggestions for you in terms of poses. There is this pose function that teaches you how to pose and yeah, they actually have an outline while you're taking a photo. So let me show you guys for example. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a filter. Let's see which filter. Maybe this one. So it's a selfie filter. And yeah, I have to follow the outline and I'm gonna go looks really bad guys don't do this at home so moving on to the korean apps the only reason why i have these three apps is because fangirl life stop it get some help so v life and dam cafe it's more for my ab6 fangirl life so my favorite k-pop group would usually upload live stream content on v life and also photos on dam cafe so yeah that's pretty much it Whereas for Kakao Talk, I don't really use it. I only used it because when I was in Korea, I needed to contact my friends in Korea and they use Kakao Talk. So for my entertainment and music tab, I have three music apps and of course Netflix. Out of the three music apps, I actually use Spotify the most. So Spotify came to the Vietnamese music market in 2018 and I just love it very much. I like how diverse it is compared to Zing because for Spotify, you get a lot of international music as well, not just V-pop. Whereas for Zing, I feel like it's trying to catch up to Spotify right now, but I don't know. It just feels very outdated to me. In my old video, I actually recommended Zing because at that time, there were no other apps, like musical apps that could match up to Zing. But now we've got Spotify and yeah, I just prefer Spotify now, guys. I have my playlist. I will share with you some few playlists that I am listening to right now. Uh, whereas for my Apple Music, I don't use Apple Music, like I only download the music into my phone. Use it for all the songs I've downloaded from my CDs or albums or on iTunes. And yes, recently I downloaded Netflix and subscribed to it because yeah, quarantine period and sometimes you're just bored and you need something to watch, right? They also have Vietnamese shows on here guys, so it's pretty interesting. Uh, some of the movies I've already watched though, so I'm actually spending a lot of my time watching documentaries, uh, Studio Ghibli, and what else? I've actually put N with an E and the end of the effing world to my list to watch, so hopefully I'll have time to watch those. Okay, moving on to my location and navigation apps. I don't use Compass. Um, I don't think you need to use a Compass. You only need to use Google Maps in Vietnam. I know some countries don't allow Google Maps. Nani? But Vietnam is one of those countries that do allow Google Maps. Weather, not really accurate, but it's there for your reference. Uh, maps I don't really use and for Airbnb when I'm traveling and I need to book an accommodation I will look up Airbnb first and if I can't find something that's suitable I will look at other websites Okay, my widget apps are not really interesting. Let's just move on to the Vietnamese apps, shall we? So as you can see in the Vietnamese section, I have three apps Zalo, 
Shopee and Google Translate. Well, it's not really a Vietnamese app, but still, it's a language app, I guess. So for Zalo, it's a messaging and chatting app, just like Messenger, just like WhatsApp, Viber. But it's the Vietnamese version, so a lot of Vietnamese have Zalo. So really, the first thing that people ask from you when they just met you is either your number or your Zalo, which is connected to your number, basically. But you can also add people by their user ID. So I need Zalo to connect with a lot of business partners, especially. And yeah, uh, it's almost like Facebook in a sense that you can also upload photos or stories. <laughs> and also the government will reach out to you via Zalo if there are any important announcements. For example, during this pandemic, they actually send messages via SMS as well as Zalo. So that's something very interesting to me. Uh, you can also pay uh, via Zalo. So Zalo Pay, you can book a hotel, transport, have some banking service apparently. I don't use all of these additional services to be honest, I just use it as a chatting service. When it comes to online shopping, I usually go for either Shopee or Tiki. So I don't have the Tiki app on my phone, but I do have the Shopee app. And as mentioned in one of my previous videos, Shopee is like the Amazon of Southeast Asia if you think about it. It's like a platform that connects sellers and buyers. It's pretty straightforward, you can find almost everything here, anything and everything, but just be aware of fake stuff guys. So what I really like about the Translate app on your phone is that it can do real-time translation via pictures and not only text. You can just use the camera on your phone, hover the camera over the text that you want to translate and we'll do like a real-time translation on top of that. So that's really cool for me. So moving on to my health, banking and finance apps, I will focus on Momo for this particular section out of all the apps. So for Momo, it's like a wallet if you think about it. It's like your Apple wallet, whatever kind of phone wallet that you have. So you can actually pay a lot of things using this uh, application. You can pay for your phone bills, you can pay for your utility bills. You can also use this at certain shops and pay via the wallet. Once again, this application is connected to your ATM card or internet bank account. So treat it like a wallet, you just need to top up and then you can pay for a variety of services. For example, you can pay for electricity, water, internet, uh, phone, insurance, even Lazada. Like what I mentioned before earlier, you can actually connect your Momo wallet with other applications. So partnering merchants include uh, coffee shops such as coffee house, cinemas, you know, CGV, convenience stores. So yeah, a lot of places do accept uh, payment by Momo. You just need to like scan the QR code. They'll either give you a QR code to scan at the shop or you can give them your code and they'll scan yours. You can even transfer money from your wallet to another person's bank account or you can transfer from your wallet to another person's Momo wallet. So yeah, it's just very convenient. There are a lot of different types of e-wallet applications out there in Vietnam, but I use Momo the most. If I'm not wrong, AirPay, AirPay, Mocha, which Grab uses. As for health applications, I use Flow and AirVisual. So for Flow, it's more for the ladies out there guys just to track my menstruation cycle and of course to track when is the next time of the month most of the time they predict pretty accurately so yeah i rely on this just because i can't remember all the time as for air visual i use this app to monitor the air quality in various cities or countries so in my case i have ho chi minh city i have hanoi singapore melbourne for some reason montreal and budapest so yeah just to see what the air quality is like and whether I need to wear a mask outside if the air quality is bad. Last but not least, my work app. So I have my Outlook, which is my work email. I also have Trello, which is like a task management app. I use Trello for both my personal and for work. So for personal, I'll just put down my task of the day and tick it when I'm done. As for like work, I usually use this app to assign work to people, making sure that they follow up and yeah, complete their work. And then I've got the CCTV app and the application app, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Oh guys, I forgot one more app, which is my WhatsApp. So WhatsApp right at the bottom right here. And this app here is my day-to-day -day communication with my family members. I think a lot of Singaporeans use WhatsApp, uh, if I'm not wrong. Very funny. So Zalo is mainly for Vietnamese communication and WhatsApp it's mainly for English communication. So it's just very interesting how I use so many different types of 
communication apps just to communicate to various people that is all for what is on my phone so these applications are pretty straightforward and they're pretty functional i don't know i just don't like playing games on my phone now i hope you guys have enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section below what are your favorite apps that you like to use or what kind of apps you think would be useful please give this video a thumbs up if you like it subscribe to my channel if you have not already and i'll see you in my next video bye guys